Hello, in this video we're looking at gene mutations. So with gene mutations we're looking here specifically at what happens when there's a mutation to one individual base in the genetic code um, or in the gene. So first of all we've got a category of mutations called base substitutions. So if we imagine that we've got this code here, so this um, sequence, this genetic sequence, DNA sequence, um, is made of three codons. So we've got the first codon CCT, then the next codon GAG, and then we've got another GAG. A base substitution is where one of those bases, so in this case we're going to take the base A, and the mutation causes that base to be substituted, be changed for another base. So we end up with CCT because there was no substitution in this codon, so that remains the same. But then we're going to have a substitution in the second codon, so we're going to have G and then T and then G. So the base A has been substituted for the base T. And then our last codon also remains the same. The second kind of gene mutation is a base addition. So we start off with our same original DNA sequence, but this time what we're going to do, the mutation causes the addition of a base here. So in this case we're saying that an A is added at this point in our DNA sequence. So how does that affect the code and the codons? Well, our first codon is now changed because Remember, a codon is a, is a triplet codon. It's made of three base pairs. So to start with, we had in our original sequence CCT. But because we've added the A in there, we've now got CCA. And this T is going to form part of the next triplet, the next codon. So we now have this T, which was here, is now part of the second codon with this G and this A. And then the last codon is this G with this G and this A. And then this G here would be on its own. The last mutation that we need to look at is a base deletion. So this time, as it suggests, what we're going to do is we're going to delete a base. So we're going to delete this one and see how that then affects the sequence. So again, our first codon is going to be altered because we need to have three bases in our codon. So this C and this C are now joined by this G here. Then we'd have A, G and G forming our next codon. And then we've only got two bases left, A and G. So we don't have enough here to form a codon. So what we're interested now in is the effect that these mutations have um, on the, um, the polypeptide, which therefore, of course, will affect our phenotype. So first of all, we'll look at the effect of the base substitutions. So here's the code that we started off with. Now, when you look, uh, there, are, there are tables that you can look up to find out what a particular DNA codon, what amino acid it codes for. So the codon CCT codes for the amino acid GLY, GLY. All of the amino acids have a three letter abbreviation, so we don't need to worry about what the actual amino acid name is, we can just call it GLY. If you look up in the same table, you'll find that there's a GAG codon codes for the amino acid LU, and then we have another amino acid LU. So this sequence of DNA will code for the three amino acids Gly, Lu and Lu. So what effect does the base substitution have then? Well we know from what we said before that we've now got a different codon in the middle. This first codon is unchanged so we still have the amino acid Gly and we still at the end have the amino acid Lu but in the middle if we look this up in the table 
GTG stands for the amino acid His. So this one change in our base sequence, changing the A for the T, has caused a change in this amino acid. Now, that may or may not have a big effect on the polypeptide. It depends on the bonding that takes place and how the, um, this different amino acid, the properties of it, and then that will depend on how the polypeptide then folds up. So changing this one base, if it causes a change in the amino acid, it may cause quite a big change in the polypeptide. It may not, depending on the properties of that amino acid. It is possible, though, to have a base substitution which has no effect at all on the polypeptide. So, for example, if we take another code on ACA, and if you look up that codes for the amino acid cis, if you substitute the A, if there's a mutation and the A is substituted for a G, it still gives you the amino acid cis. So, there are lots of amino acids which are coded for by more than one codon. As a result, this mutation is what we call a silent mutation because we would not see any effect on the phenotype. It would not affect the polypeptide in any way. It would not affect the phenotype in any way. However, a single base mutation could still have a huge effect. And an example of where you would see this, if we changed that final A for a T, ACT is a stop codon. So wherever this base substitution occurred, you would now have this codon, which would tell um, the, uh, the protein synthesis uh, mechanism to stop. So anything that was further down the line, any of the codons down here in the sequence, they would, um, they would not be transcribed um, the amino acids would not be uh, brought to the ribosome, and so that could have a massive effect on the, the polypeptide because it just gets cut off. So base substitutions can have no effect if there's a silent mutation. It could have a small effect depending on the amino acid that, and the properties, or it could have a very big effect if a stop codon is introduced. Okay. What about the effect of base additions? These tend to have much bigger effects. So here is our sequence, our initial sequence. And we're going to add our base A in there. So from what we saw before, we now see that we've now had this shift. Because this T used to be part of the first codon, it's now shifted to the second. This G used to be part of the second codon, it's now shifted to the third. So adding this base in, has shifted everything down to the right. And this can have a huge effect because this codon is changed, but all of the other codons are also changed. Now, in this instance, CCA actually still gives us the same amino acid as we had before, GLY. Um, however, although this amino acid here is the same despite the addition mutation. The next amino acid is different. The next amino acid is also different. So what we've had here is we've had what we call a frame shift. The addition of one amino acid, uh, sorry, the addition of one base here has shifted all of the codons and that therefore has the potential to affect every single amino acid further along in that DNA sequence, which, as you can imagine, would have a total, completely profound, massive effect on the polypeptide and make it probably a completely different polypeptide that was produced. We see the same thing happening when we have a base deletion. So here's our original code and the original amino acids and then if we delete this base, again, we see a frame shift. This first amino acid happens to stay the same because of what we call the redundancy in the code, the fact that we have um, this one amino acid 
has got several codons that code for the same amino acid, but then the next codon has been affected. And actually, this frame shift in this situation means that we don't have enough bases here to make a codon, so we've actually cut the polypeptide short. But again, the idea of the frame shift is that every codon further down in the sequence from where the deletion um, or the addition mutation occurs, they will all be affected. And therefore, it has a massive effect on the polypeptide and the phenotype. Okay, that's all. Thank you.